morning, it's Matt. Welcome back to the shop. And today we're talking about um, this is the second video, maybe third video on electronics, so bike electronics and all this. Now we're going to. Um, I've got some examples coming up of stuff we can actually test and see and so on. But what I want to talk about first is um, these things, multimeters, and um, basically an understanding of our electronic, um, electronical testing capabilities. So we're going to talk basically about, there's two things that you generally do with a multimeter when you're testing your bike stuff. Um, and that's basically uh, resistance measurements and voltage measurements. So basically uh, break down exactly what we're actually testing, what we're looking for and so on. So you might have a circuit where you have a, uh, a filament bulb and then a circuit and then in here we'll have a switch somewhere and then obviously this goes to ground and this goes to the positive of your battery and all the rest of it. So these um, tests, you know, you can test your coils, you can test your light bulbs, you can test all sorts. And really there's only two ways you can test this kind of stuff. So um, for an example of voltage, when we test with voltage, um, if you want to know if a, a switch is working or your light bulb is working or you want to try and find out where the problem is, is it the fact that your light bulb has blown, something wrong with your connections or something silly like that. On your bulb, just if you've got a bare net bulb, you'll have two little uh, contacts where the uh, bulb fitting will go. Let me get a bulb just so you know what the fuck I'm talking about. There's a rear light bulb you can see there and you can see on the back of it on this bare net fitting you can see there's them two little contacts. If it'll focus on that, not me. Um, them little two little contacts. So what we can do is we set our multimeter to volts, we set our multimeter to DC because uh, nearly everything in a bike is DC, everything after the regulator, and we'll go through exactly what that is, rectifier regulator. Um, so what you can do is you get your two probes, you can stick it on here and here, uh, positive and negative, it doesn't really matter, it'll either give you a positive or a negative readout. And what we can do is, is we can then switch our lights closer, so you press your, you know, you pull your brake because there's a switch on there, or your, your, your um, Rear brake, you could press that, something like that. And basically what you do is you're now connecting this entire circuit because it's connected internally in the multimeter and this will give you a voltage. And yesterday we were pissing around with Isaac's um, scooter and it gave us 13.5 volts uh, when we did that. So what this is telling you is that the system is actually supplying uh, what the 12 volt bulb needs. Now don't panic if it's a bit over it, that's just because of that thing's crap um, regulation. But um, you can use the voltage to actually see if your end component, so your bulb, um, just see if this bulb, this bulb's knackered, but just see if this bulb was working. You can then test with the voltage to see if it's actually getting power that it requires. If you test this and you don't get anything, it still says 1.1 or something weird like that, or even zero open circuit. It means that the bulb itself is not receiving power. Maybe a switch is faulty, maybe a battery is not connected, and then you can go around testing stuff like that. You can then um, use your uh, con uh, continuity setting. So basically, this is when this bleeps when you've got a complete circuit, and you can find your switch, and it'll have two little spades or maybe three little spades. You can connect them together and see if there's continuity across your switch when you close it, when you basically activate that switch. So then you can test your switch, and then you, you know you can use that to test your switch. The other thing you can do is obviously on your up oh, bloody hell fire on your battery. You know you'll have your battery here with your two terminals. Go and get your multimeter, stick your multimeter on these leads at voltage, and just see what voltage the battery has. If your battery is good, your switch is good, but you're still not getting power here. Well, there only really remains one thing then, don't there, in the circuit, and that's the ground. How do you connect your ground? Well, just say if this is, that's the wrong way around. Just say it's like this, connect one lead to your bulb like that, find a bit on your engine, connect it to your engine, which is also ground there. And then all this you see, the path is going from your engine to your multimeter and through this ground here, which is connected to your engine as well. If this isn't working, then obviously you have a shitty ground. So you can see straight away, just from testing something very simple like a bulb, it's a very simple diagram, it's easy to understand. You can use volt, voltage and continuity, but you can also use, um, well, just voltage and continuity generally. You can use them too to just find out if your entire lighting circuit is working. That's pretty much your entire light circuit worked out. Now, some light circuit paths are a bit different, but 
we're looking at the actual contacts at the bulb, we're looking at the switch, we're looking at the battery and we're looking at the ground. Hope that makes sense, like I say we're going to go through this real simple stuff until we get onto the really complicated stuff. But um, as you can see there that's an easy way to get your mind around what you are actually testing. You're using voltage because you know what it should be above 12 volts, that's what the battery, uh, the bulb requires and then you can test all the way through that system and find out which bit of this system is actually knackered. Hope that makes sense and I'll see you in a bit.